Welcome to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday. Let's jump back into what is Christianity. And we're going to get into another video here that's going to just dovetail right on where we were before. And uh, of course, it was just uh, a few days ago. But let's jump back in uh, to Romans and chapter 7 and verse 6. Before we get there, let's first and foremost just talk for a second about why we do these videos. Someone may be new to the videos. And of course, uh, the reason why we do these videos, number one, is for you to begin to develop more of a real and tangible relationship with God. Um, if I go across the country like I do, around the world as I do at some points, in fact, we're getting ready this next year uh, to be in Brazil, uh, Colombia, and Switzerland. And so I uh, haven't done that in a while. Of course, uh, COVID uh, knocked out a lot of that, the overseas travel. But uh, nonetheless, as I travel, if there's two things that people really want, I'm talking Christians now. And that will be number one, to recognize his presence. Number two, to hear his voice. You could turn it around and say number one, to hear his voice. Number two, to recognize his presence. Well, folks, if we look back into the book of Genesis, which is really where everything began, you know, in the second chapter, you can see where there's a couple of teenage boys that are out doing the work that they're doing. And one of them decides through wrong thoughts that he's meditating on. And this is, of course, after Adam and Eve have been removed from the garden because sin has already been established in their hearts. And then that sin in their hearts went to the sin in their boys' hearts, Cain and Abel. And now Cain is, is contemplating committing murder with his brother, Abel, and God speaks to him. And Cain recognizes God and hears his voice. He hears his voice in complete sentences. Now, if you could take those two things and insert those two things into the body of Christ, you would have a very strengthened, hearty, bold, and assertive body of Christ doing the work of Jesus, not telling people that they're dying and going to hell and that they're just worthless. No, loving on them and showing them the results of a risen Savior, just with those two things. So when we talk about God being real, I mean, it's time that God become real to each and every one of us. Number two, the reality of God in your life is the reason why faith becomes just a part of your relationship and you get answers to your prayers. Answers to your prayers? Yes. Number three, share those answers. They're called testimonies with other people. So we want to give you an invitation from Jesus in Matthew chapter 11, verse 27 to 30 in the, in the Message Bible. I was going to say Passion Translation. Sometimes I've got so many translations here, I don't know exactly just want, which one I'm in, but we're in the Message now, and it says this. Now Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the Son the way the Father does, nor the Father the way the Son does. You know, if you stop right there, you say, see, it's special. Their relationship was something no one else can have. But Jesus went on to say, I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it, <coughs> excuse me, line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you willing to listen? And then he went on to say, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Well, you know, we know this, that when God, uh, in, in the book of Genesis, created the whole garden and the universe and everything that is, and he made man and placed him in the garden. They were inseparable until sin separated them. <clears throat> we also can see this in the life of Jesus. He would not allow the outside world sin or the dictates of humanity to separate him from his connection to his father. Why? That was the vital connection. Just like the vital organs in your body are so necessary that they're working for you to live, your vital connection to God is the reason why everything in your spiritual life works as it should. Then you go over into the book of Revelations and you'll see that we're going to be with him forever. Forever. 
connected with our Lord, tangibly experiencing our God. Come on, when we get to the throne of God, there's not going to be an empty throne. And it says, make up whatever you want him to be in your own mind. He, after all, is just a concept, a figment of your imagination. No, there's a real person on the throne. Let's let him be real. And this invitation is about Jesus being real. Well, let's jump back over into some of these translations of Romans in chapter 7, verse 6. We finally got through Way's translation, which was so good that we are enthralled still under what? The new conditions of listening to and fellowshipping with and enjoying the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Everything's changed on this side of the covenant. We're not living under the old covenant regulations and doing life like they did many years ago before Jesus was born and before Jesus died and, and arose again and then presented himself before the Father to clear every single human being, past, present, and future of all their sin, all their sickness, all their disease, and the troubles and turmoil of this life that has come through sin and come through Satan himself. Jesus released us into a brand new kind of life. Let's take advantage of it. I know we're surrounded, surrounded in every way, shape, and form by a works mentality. It's in your home when you're a kid. You, do, you get praised when you do good. You, you get scolded when you do bad. It's in the school systems. It's, it's in your work, you know, your job performance. It's in society. It's all about you, 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 until you are so frazzled and frustrated and feel like you can't take another step forward. Well, let's switch covenants. Let's get over to the new covenant. Connie Bear translation said this, but now that we have died with Christ, the law wherein we were formerly held fast has lost its hold upon us. Notice these words like it's lost its hold upon us, where it, we formerly were held fast to it. It almost makes it sound like it wasn't necessarily a great thing. I mean, for 4,000 years, approximately, you know, Israel is under this law. And it's not necessarily a great thing. Now, they worked the best they could under this law, and people have done the best they can today under the law. But we're not under the law anymore. We're no longer held fast by these regulations. It says right here, so that we are no longer under the bondage of the letter, but in the newness of the Spirit. The newness of the Spirit is a definition Part of one, just one of, of a def, many definitions for the new covenant, for being born again, for being a Christian in the day. Amen. For those of you who may be listening to me that have never accepted Christ as your Savior, and you're wondering about all these people who seem so frustrated and mean and almost a little bit ugly in the way they present themselves because they're in bondage to the law and they're bickering and backbiting one another and comparing themselves with one another. And these are the people that are in the church and they want me to be a part of that? No, that's under the old covenant, sir, ma'am, young person, older person. That's under the old covenant. Under the new covenant, we are in the what? The new service of the Spirit. Oh, Laddie, why don't you share it with us and tell us what that's all about? Well, I plan to. Picture translation said, but now being released from the law, you are released from trying to be a good person. Boy, you know what that sounds like? That sounds like heresy with a capital H. Sure enough, it does. You just told everybody to go sin. <laughs> You're so ridiculous if you think that's what I said. Paul had to deal with these same arguments. He's trying to help people make the conversion from the old covenant bound by the law to a relationship now bound by grace so that you can experience God. Get back, back right back into the garden where you're walking with him and talking with him and where you don't remember the day that you actually had a problem. You can't remember the day when you were sick. You don't remember really sweating it any longer. And you haven't been thinking about trying to be a good person or do the right thing in so many years. But when you think about it, 
you kind of lost all your desire for the things that used to trip you up and you don't even find yourself wanting to be that person again? When did I change? How did it change? When did I get healed? How did I get healed? How did things turn around? Well, wouldn't it be so wonderful if those were the questions that we were asking one another because we were all enjoying Jesus so much and enjoying the companionship of the Holy Ghost, we weren't so aware of ourselves and our surroundings and what we've done and what we haven't done that we were so overly concerned with our performance that we literally struggled day in, day out with our performance. You know, I sometimes I just got to take a break, even in these videos, and I know my time just keeps on rolling here. Just wish I could pause it for a second so that you can take a breath and I can take a breath. It's almost wear me out talking about it, folks. We're supposed to be enjoying life. Listen, I can, I can transparently say to you, I way overthink things. I'm way too intense with things. I can be so far removed in my thoughts that I don't enjoy even people that are around me. Those are tendencies of mine because I keep grinding all the time. Relax, Jim, relax, relax. It's okay, you can laugh, you can have fun. You don't have to be pressing every single moment. The Lord is with you, enjoy his presence. Those are the things that are helping me to be a better version of me in the sense that I'm letting who he is start to work in me instead of just being all bottled up and so tight, you know, you snap at the moment's notice. And when I find myself snapping or just reacting quickly to things, I realize it's, I'm in my own world. I need to get back into his world. And it's a consciousness, folks, and it's a choice. Let's go on. I love this. We are dead to what once controlled us. We don't want to be under that control. Have you ever been under someone's control? Do you know how absolutely nauseated it is to be under someone's control or to be around someone that always wants to control things? Well, we lived under that and we put ourselves back under it is what Paul's trying to help us and the reason why he's sharing this in the middle of such great chapters, Romans 6 and Romans 8, 7, he's sharing this with us so we don't go back there. If you look at Paul's writings, they're all very similar. He shares all these wonderful in him realities and the love of God and this amazing uh, relationship that we have with God and these prayers for us to just have revelation, knowledge, and experience with him, the eyes of our understanding and imagination flooded with light that we can sh see the snapshots, the pictures, the things that God has prepared before uh, we were even born for our good and for our future. I mean, Paul talks like this. It's encouraging. And then the interesting thing is he switches gears halfway in his letters. And he begins to basically talk about, don't go back to the flesh. Don't go back to the world, which means there's nothing good of the flesh. <clears throat> there's nothing good of the world. And by all means, don't get tripped up and go back to the legal system. The legal system will put you face-to-face -face with you and flesh and the world and doing everything that you really didn't want to do, having the wrong attitudes about life will resurface all over again. But you choose to put yourself there if you don't choose to not put yourself there. Well, it goes on to say, and our lives are no longer motivated by the obsolete way of following a written code. Isn't that interesting? It's obsolete. It's obsolete. You know, Aaron would look at me wanting to wear an old pair of jeans and say, they're kind of out of style. And I would argue, but they're jeans. I mean, jeans are jeans. You can always wear jeans. She says, not looking like that. <laughs> when something's obsolete, put it aside. Put aside your idea of waking up day after day trying to improve yourself and begin to let your heart reach out and find God and begin to enjoy him by asking him and inviting him. It's called acknowledgement. We're going to get into that. Asking him and inviting him to be a part of everything you do. Praise the Lord. And he goes on to say, so that we now may serve God by living in the freshness of of a new life in the power of the Holy Spirit. I like the word freshness. Amen. It's like you walk outside and just smell the air after a rain. 
say, oh, it just smells fresh. You smell a flower, you know, you smell a nice fragrance, the freshness of something. It's a brand new item that you just got. I'm, I'm looking in my, my, uh, my window here through this video and seeing that UPS was just going by. So they delivered to you a fresh new item and you look at it and say, ah, oh, this is so wonderful because it's not used and it's old and it's abused. No, it's fresh. It's just, just right. It's fresh from the store and it tastes perfect. Is that a, a good apple or a bad apple? No, it's fresh. Come on, we have a relationship that has freshness and it's found in the Holy Spirit. Mm, mm, I've got to make you hungry for this. The Amplified said this, but now we are discharged from the law and have terminated all intercourse with it. Well, intercourse is a big word. But you could use it just very simply to say interaction. We've now been terminated all interaction with the law. And it goes on to say, having died to what once restrained and held us captive. So the law restrained us and held us captive. How did it restrain us? Because it always put us or your flesh or you at the center of everything. And when you would fail time in and time again, you would become frustrated all over again with what you couldn't perform. It restrained us and it did what? It held us captive. But it goes on to say, so now we serve not under obedience to the old code of written regulations, but under obedience to the promptings of the Spirit in the newness of life. Listen to that. The promptings of the Spirit in the newness of life. Mm, thank you, Lord. I mean, just being prompted. Prompted to give somebody a blessing. Prompted to hear what he's saying. Prompted to see what he's showing you. Prompted to feel what he's endeavoring to get you to feel. I'm telling you, the Lord wants you to feel his goodness and his love and his arms wrapped around you, and he'll prompt you to feel these things. <clears throat> he will help to bring you away from a focus that has you mesmerized on something of this world and the flesh and bring you to a, being mesmerized on God, you're so good. And for a moment, you just close your eyes and realize he's right there. And he's as close as the mention of his name. Come on, you can pull some songs out and sing them. Here's a great story. It's really good. It says, I was summoned to jury duty for two weeks. I had already been excused in June for a family vacation. And of course, they gave me another date. Last week at my Bible study, a lady was questioning me about my grandparents' ministry and how she viewed them as ministering in a higher realm. Those words were pretty powerful to me. I got quiet before the Lord and said to him, and so can I. As I was getting my thoughts together for the uh, two weeks of jury duty, I just stopped and said, Lord, I'm just going to ask you, that all those cases are settled out of court and I don't even have to go. That was on Tuesday. Today, Friday, I answered a call of a number I didn't know. And it was a clerk from the county courthouse uh, telling me the judge's docket had been cleared and I was released from my duty. I was in the car with Tom and I just started laughing and saying, God, you are so good and it's the truth. So thankful for your teachings on grace, making us more aware of him. Folks, this is so simple but it's just so profound. Let it become an experience that you have day in and day out. Well, by all means, write us your grace stories at jhmi at jimhockaday.com. And for sure, you can subscribe to the Adventures in Grace YouTube channel, or you can follow us on Jim Hockaday uh, um, Facebook page, Jim Hockaday Ministry Facebook page. It's going to be good to keep on going with this. I'm not trying to wear you out, but the more I give you, the more your heart can be settled, your mind can relax, and you can begin to experience God. We'll see you next time.